my channel. My name is Carly Stevens and this is English Nerd. Thank you for your patience if you've been waiting for this video. Um, I am at the end of the All About Hamlet series, of course, and we are in Act 5, Scene 2, the very last scene of the play. So that was um, daunting to me because so much happens in this scene. So I decided to break it up into two. Sorry for people who have been patiently waiting for this. I also haven't been making as many videos just because school started back up again and of course I'm an English teacher and uh, I've also been uh, doing some other things for my writing as well. I'm on Instagram now if you're um, on Instagram and want to follow me. I am Carly Stevens Books. So anyway, let's let's dive in. Enough of that. Act 5, Scene 2, the very last scene of Hamlet is a doozy. Everything comes to a head. And it starts off just with Hamlet and Horatio. Horatio is the one person that um, Hamlet likes at all. He even says at one point as he um, just finishes, or he, he chews out Rosencrantz and Guildenstern in the same scene, that he holds Horatio in his heart's core, yes, in his heart of hearts, which has raised some speculation, but anyway. Horatio is one of the only people, really the only person, that Hamlet confides in. So we see the two of them talking, and Hamlet's confiding in him what happened on the journey that he took from Denmark to England that was interrupted by pirates. And if you haven't seen that video, that's in Act 4, Scene 6. I think it's, it's, uh, it's in the late Act 4 scenes when Horatio learns about the pirate attack, how Hamlet was taken by the pirates, and then dropped off back in Denmark because they're awfully friendly. There's a lot more that happened during that sea voyage, so that's what Hamlet wanted to pull Horatio aside to talk about. Specifically, that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern had a, uh, had a letter that demanded that the King of England kill Hamlet, that they strike his head off. Now, how Hamlet knew to sneak into Rosencrantz and Guildenstern's room and feel around for this royal ordinance that demanded his death, I'm not exactly sure, but Hamlet has been, as I've said multiple times, one step ahead of everybody this entire time. I think that he pretty much knows Claudius's plans, which makes Act 5 seem to even more interesting. So Hamlet says, Yes, yeah, so I found I found this this letter that demanded my death. Horatio is horrified because Horatio, for one reason or another, just loves Hamlet, is loyal to him. And then Hamlet describes how all of his uh, schooling about how to write in the, this royal fancy fashion came in handy because he wrote a very flowery replacement that demanded that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern be killed instead. This is, this is the moment when I like Hamlet the least. I mean, it's, it's a, the time when he fights with Laertes in Ophelia's grave is a close second, but this is, this has to be first. Because Rosencrantz and Guildenstern didn't do anything wrong. I will stand on that. People will argue, and Hamlet will argue, well, they were spies for Claudius. Um, honestly, were they? They, they were promised payment from the king and queen to see what was wrong with Hamlet and help him out, but really, I don't think that they did anything wrong at all. And yet Hamlet, without any compunction whatsoever, orders for them to be killed. Horatio puts two and two together and says, so Guildenstern and Rosencrantz go to it, you know, so, you, so they're dead. Hamlet says, they are not near my conscience, their defeat does by their own insinuation grow. They're not near my conscience? They should be. They should be near your conscience. And you can almost see Horatio having this moment of realization of what kind of a monster Hamlet is and what sort of a king he would make. One that's extremely destructive to Denmark. So he exclaims, why, what a king is this? It's, it's a pretty tragic moment for Horatio, I think. 
And Hamlet just continues with an explanation. Don't you think, don't you think it's perfect conscience for me to take action against the king who killed my father and whored my mother and all these things? But that's not what he was doing. He wasn't taking revenge against the king. He was taking revenge against two of his childhood friends who just got caught in the middle. So, so there's that. One thing that you need to keep in mind as you're looking at Act 5, Scene 2, is just thinking about what kind of a king would Hamlet make? Because he's the other option. It's either Claudius or, if he's out of the way, then Hamlet is the heir to the throne. And nobody's going to argue that Claudi or Claudius is that great of a king so far. He's made some, some serious missteps, the biggest one, of course, being how he got there. But would Hamlet really be any better? I don't know. I mean, the, the people love him a lot more. Claudius talks about that, but um, I don't think he actually would be a better king. I know, I went there. Just before they're interrupted, Hamlet says, well, everybody dies, so it's really no big deal that I killed these people. The one thing I do regret, he, he says, is that to Laertes I forgot myself. For by the image of my cause I see the portraiture of his. I'll court his favors. But sure, the bravery of his grief did put me into a towering passion. So he does regret attacking Ophelia at, or attacking Laertes at Ophelia's funeral, because he recognizes himself in Laertes. Now he should recognize himself in Laertes because Laertes is like a perfect foil for him, that contrasting character. Laertes' story is almost a mirror image of Hamlet's. Both of them are trying to get revenge for dead fathers and all of that. Um, so it's really only himself, the, the part of himself that he sees in Laertes that he regrets offending. And that is lame. And then Osric comes in. Osric is, <laughs> this is the one scene where Osric even appears. He is just sent, uh, delivering a message at this point. If you have seen the Kenneth Branagh version of Hamlet, which I've been recommending this entire time, this character is actually played by Robin Williams. This is the one scene where he appears, and he does a spectacular job. Osric is uh, sort of a, well, he's very much dandy, and is Laertes' biggest fan. I mean, he just can't, he just can't say enough about how much Laertes is the, the best thing ever to happen to the world. So, Hamlet makes fun of him. It's it's pretty hilarious. I mean, I almost feel bad for Osric because he is just all flourishy and and uh, describing how wonderful Laertes is, and Hamlet just keeps keeps mocking him, and Horatio is laughing along with Hamlet, and everything that he says they they laugh at, like. For instance, once he actually gets to his message, which is that Laertes wants to duel with Hamlet, um, just in a contest, and and the French are going to bet on Laertes to win, and Claudius is going to bet on Hamlet to win. Hamlet asks, what's his weapon? Speaking of Laertes, of course, so we're, what are we going to fight with? Rapier and dagger. Osric replies, well, that's two of his weapons, but, well... <laughs> says Hamlet. So it's this really accessible kind of comedy for at least uh, part of it. Some of the references are a little specific, but uh, but it is pretty, it is pretty undeniably funny. And Hamlet, he's, again, he's known what Claudius's plans are to send him to England, for instance, with the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. So when Claudius sets up this duel between Laertes and Hamlet, he knows that something's up. He's he's a fool in some ways, but he's he's very intelligent in others. So he knows that there's something going on. Osric leaves, and a lord comes in just to give another message. I don't know why Hamlet does, or Shakespeare decides to have two characters deliver messages. Seems a lot more economical to just send one person. But somebody else comes in and says, um, by the way, your mother wants you to be nice to Laertes before you duel with him. That would be that would be helpful, and Hamlet says, of course, so I will, I will be, I will be kind to him before I attack him with my fencing sword, with my rapier. 
Horatio also is, um, despite his very, his bullheaded loyalty to Hamlet, an intelligent guy. So he knows that there's something going on. And he says, if your mind dislike anything, obey it. I will forestall the repair hither and say you are not fit. I'll make excuses for you, Hamlet. I will say that you are ill. I will put this off. There's no reason for you to put yourself in all this danger. And then Hamlet says one of my favorite lines in all of the final act. He says, nay, not a whit. There's special providence in the fall of a sparrow. If it be not now, it will be to come. If it be not to come, it will be now. Uh, I don't have those lines exactly right, I think, but I've put down, I've put down the book to focus on these lines. Essentially, what Hamlet's saying is that, no, no, we're going to, we're going to forge ahead with this duel, even though it looks like it might probably be a trap set by Claudius and Laertes, because death comes to every every man, every every person, at some point or another. If it's not now, it's going to be later. And then he finishes that whole meditation with the readiness is all. There's special providence in the fall of a sparrow, so God sees all. The readiness is more important than the timing. And coming from Hamlet at this point in the play, I can understand why there would be some skepticism uh, about his sincerity, about how much he, he actually has changed, if he's changed um, since the beginning of the story. But I watched this really interesting interview with Jude Law, who played Hamlet on Broadway. There are pictures, you, you should look it up, um, and a couple of short scenes online that you can see. And he said that that playing Hamlet, he was ex he was expecting it to be a very depressing kind of experience. And for many people, I think, it is, because you have to get into this dark headspace. But he said that that line in particular gave him a surprising amount of peace. And I think that's, I think that's beautiful, because there is a lot of truth in, it's not, it's not about the length of your life, it's about the quality of your life. It's so much more important than how long you live. And although I don't think I can say that Hamlet lived a particularly quality life, <laughs> Um, he has something valuable to say there, with the readiness is all. That's beautiful, actually. So that's where I want to uh, leave this video. Part two will come out next week, and I will talk about the final duel. So thanks for sticking with me through this whole series. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you press the button below and ask any questions that you have. I obviously love talking about Hamlet and all these wonderful classics. So let me know if there is anything you'd like to uh, discuss with me. I, I always respond in some way to comments. So all right, I will uh, see you on Monday.